Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This is Edine and Melinda, also known as the Hustling Hooks over on Instagram and here of course in our uh, relatively new YouTube channel. Uh, if this is your first time here and you don't know anything about us, we are part-time resellers primarily on eBay where we buy and sell and uh, flip uh, mostly anything for profit. That's right, and today we have a bulk buy of some high-end cameras that we are going to walk you through Ta -da. <laughs> and Hopefully show you any. how you test those and get those ready to list and sell them for the best profit. Yeah, and uh, in this case, it's a lot of uh, old vintage style uh, film cameras that um, there's a lot of different ones, a lot of different brands, and uh, I'll walk you through uh, how we clean them, list them, prepare them, test them, and uh, get the, like Melinda said, the highest profit that we can for them. Um, just a little bit of a story of how we got them. We actually purchased this from a private estate sale. Um, it was from a um, person who wanted to open up an antique store and uh, unfortunately never got around to it, although they did collect and collect and buy and buy. And uh, the cameras that we'll show off today, um, they were the best of the best as I left probably over a hundred cameras behind that uh, just weren't what we look for and they weren't the right profit margin for our business. Right. Uh, if you have watched any of our other videos or do follow us on Instagram, you know that we reiterate time as our biggest asset so absolutely if, yeah so he would leave the ones that maybe weren't worth 15 20 yeah a lot of them like were that. worth about 15 20 25 mm -hmm. you know the ones that i picked up were typically selling between 30 and upwards to a hundred dollars so those are the ones that we picked up um, so let's get into this video and let's learn a little bit about vintage cameras okay so let's get into these cameras i'd like to tell you a little bit about each camera what they currently go for and a little bit about how i clean them what i do to test them before i get them listed so the first one that we want to talk about is this uh, minolta so this is a minolta it's the model srt 101 it says right on the front of the camera it's in really beautiful condition it's uh it's mint there's not a lot of damage um, the lens is clean the body is clean there's not a lot of scratching or scraping I'll pop up the comps for each one of these on the screen. This one goes for about $100 to $120, so I'm, I'm super excited about this one. Most of these uh, most of these lenses will screw right off, uh, and I'll test the ones that I can by simply just winding the camera. So here I'm just going to wind it. And I'm not really sure what's going on in here, but I know that some sort of mechanism is working so it seems like the shutter speed was just set to really low or uh really slow i should say so let's see what happens if we change the shutter speed ah it works right so i can say that hey look i'm not 100 percent sure that the the camera will develop film but i know at least the mechanics work so that's what i'm going to uh, tell the potential customer on this camera the only flaw that I see with this one is just this small dent on the bottom, but I'll just close that in the listing. The next one uh, is really different than the rest of these, is a uh, Olympus. It's the Infinity Twin model, and it's actually a waterproof camera, which is pretty cool. This one is not worth very much, and you can actually see that it uh, lights right up, so it's actually working. Um, I don't know too much about these. I know that some models um, go for a lot of money. I've sold similar style cameras before for $150 that I picked up for a dollar at, at a Goodwill. So definitely look them up just because they they look cheap doesn't mean that they're, they're worthless. This one goes for about $30 to $40. Next one is another Minolta. This one here is the X370 model. Again, it says it right on the face. This one actually does have some damage. I'm not sure how you'll or if you'll be able to see it on, on the camera, but the lens, the exterior here has a little dent in it. The lens itself is fine, um, which is always good. And then this one snaps right off. There's a lever uh, that releases. Um, so all you have to do is push in and then twist. 
when I clean these, all I'm going to do is take a cotton swab and I actually already cleaned this one. I'm gonna douse it in, in alcohol and I'm just going to gently clean the glass around it. I'm really just focused on the glass on the front and the back end of the lens. I'm not going to clean inside of the actual body just because I don't want to mess anything up. I am going to, however, clean the actual body, the top, bottom, back, um, etc. All I'm going to do is use um, cotton or Q-tips, cotton swabs. Uh, you can use a soft cloth. It doesn't really matter. And I just simply use a simple uh, isopropyl alcohol. You can use other um, alcohol types. You can use cleaners. Windex will, will do just fine. It's a glass cleaner. So there's many ways to do it. Anyways, this uh, X370, um, it goes for about $80. I might sell it for just a little bit less because of this um, this lens. Uh, but I do actually have a few lenses that I bought as part of this bulk buy. So I might lot some of them up with some of the cameras that are not worth as much. The next one is an I Nikon. It's the FT2. This one uh, is in really good condition again. Um, I haven't really played with this one very much so far. I think that it winds up. Looks like it's locked. Looks like again something is going on in there, which is always good. It seems like the shutter speed is is uh, set to slow. No idea. I really don't care. Um, I don't know too much about these cameras. I do know that they work or the me mechanics work, and I do know that I can flip them for a profit. And like most things that I sell or that we sell, we we're not experts in it. We just do our research. Uh, this one is worth about a hundred dollars, which is pretty awesome. Um, really, really cool camera. It, it's a little bit confusing because the front says Nikkor mat on top, but actually, if you take a look at the bottom, I believe it was. I, I'm sorry, the back. It's actually it is a Nikon camera, and then the model number is on on top here, uh, right where my finger is. It's the FD FT2. I'm not not sure if that's going to show up on the screen or not. The next one is probably my favorite camera, um, not only because it's worth the most out of all of these, it's the Yashica Electro 35. It's worth about $150. It's a rare camera. Um, I just like the way it looks. It's super retro. It would look so, uh, so sweet on someone's bookshelf, especially someone that has this style of decor in their home. Um, it's just a really sweet looking camera. I want to describe it as retro or maybe just a little bit of steampunk. Just because it's it's so vibrant, it's super detailed. Um, yeah, I've never seen this one before in the wild. So when I saw this one, I, I definitely looked it up and uh, happily surprised that it was worth about one hundred fifty dollars, which which is pretty awesome. If I see that these are rare and that there are not too many available for sale, I will definitely uh, hike up the price a bit and uh, make sure that I'm getting top value for uh, for the camera. This one here is a, a Konica. It's the Autoflex T3. Also a, a relatively valuable camera. It goes for about $90. I like this one uh, just because it's all black. So it's kind of, um, it's just sleek. Uh, excellent condition overall. The body's in good condition. Again, the lens just snaps off on the bottom, comes right off. And they do have these red indicators and you just basically match that with the red dot on the lens, align them twist and it'll snap right back into place. I'll have to look through and see if I have the cover for this one. I'm not 100% sure, but it looks like it snaps. If I adjust the shutter speed, wind it. Not sure if that made a difference or not, but at least the mechanics work, which is awesome. Uh, always a good start. Uh, I'll see if I have any accessories for, for the Konica and see if I can bundle some of the lenses. Next, we have another Konica. This is the Autoflex T. This one's not worth as much. This one's only worth about $30 to $40. This one is probably the dirtiest uh, camera that I picked up out of that lot. Um, but alcohol will take care of it. The lens is in good condition. Uh, overall, the camera is not in too horrible condition. It does have some blemishing on top, but most of these are 70s, 80s. Um, they're going to have some scratches on them. That, that's just the way uh, old stuff is, especially stuff that's been handled. And last, as far as cameras, is a Canon. This is the Canon TL. 
Um, it does have a QL designator as well on it. I'm not really sure what that stands for. Uh, really good condition overall again. Uh, it's solid. It's well built. This one goes for about $40 as well. If you look up Canons, um, the AE1 is definitely one you want to look out for. It goes anywhere from $100 to $150 without accessories. Uh, we've sold several of those. We've sold one uh, relatively recently for $199, I think it was, and it came with some accessories, some lenses, etc. So definitely keep your eye out for a Canon. Uh, let me grab the last one and uh, I'll walk you through it. So the last one is not a film camera. You're gonna have to guess what's inside the box. It's Bell & Howell. Uh, I've not heard of that brand before, but uh, I looked it up just like most things. Any guesses? Not a camera, or at least not a uh, film camera. It's actually a video camera. It's an old Bell & Howell 16 millimeter Model 240 video camera. How cool is that? It, it just looks like uh, it's from forever ago. The neat, things of, uh, neat thing about this uh, camera is that, of course, it comes with the original box, which is awesome. It's in mint condition, which is awesome. And then it also comes with some accessories, some lenses, um, and a couple of little doohickeys, I'll call them, because I'm not really sure what these are. I haven't looked inside to find out. The other cool thing about this one is that it does have the original instruction uh, manual, uh, which is really cool. And it has a service letter dated October 13, 1967. So this is uh, a service letter that was um, typed out for Mr. Nelson, who lived in Fremont, Michigan. And it explains whatever situation that they dealt with and uh, how they handled the customer service complaint. So this is what customer service looked like in the 60s, which is much, much different than today where we go on Twitter and uh, talk negatively about a fast food joint and they reply and give us a coupon. So it's a much different time. It does have some other records, uh, some service records. So that's pretty cool. It, it really just feels like I'm holding a piece of history. Um, this one I'll price pretty high without any accessories. These go for about $90. I think I'll price it closer to $150 because it does have that uh, letter that, that dates the camera and does have some accessories with it as well. Um, so that's it for this haul. I didn't show any of the lenses just because I wanted to save on time. Some of those lenses I'll sell individually. Some of them I'll lot up with the cameras depending on brand. Um, I paid $100 for everything. Um, and based off of just some simple math, as far as total sales, I should be looking at about $800 to $900 total for these cameras, which is a good ROI in uh, for us. The next thing I'll do is I'll clean them up tonight. I'll get them photographed and start listing them. Uh, I'll have to figure out what accessories to bundle, uh, but I'm really excited to get these listed. I know there's a great market for them. When I looked these up, I made sure that the sell-through rates were favorable, so I know that these should go relatively quickly. Just want to say thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you like this type of content, uh, do subscribe and stick around. Uh, there's much more coming. Uh, this is part of our journey into reselling and other uh, revenue streams in the future. Um, so leave us a comment, tell us about your uh, vintage camera collection if you have one. Uh, let us know if you're interested in any of these and we'll definitely cut you a deal. Uh, they will all be available in our eBay store, but if you wanted to do a private deal, just let us know. Um, don't forget to follow us uh, on Instagram at Hustle and Hooks. I'll uh, pop that up on the screen. We do really live updates of what's going on behind the scenes, daily sales, how we package, tips, hints, bolos all that good stuff. Uh, we're here to help. If you have any questions, just let us know. Thanks again.